Ladies and gentlemen, the Vice President of the United States. The governor and I, and we were all um, doing a tour of the library here and um, talking about the significance of the passage of time, right? The significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time in terms of what we need to do to lay these wires, what we need to do to create these jobs. And there is such great significance to the passage of time when we think about a day in the life of our children. Uh, huh? There is uh, such significance to the passage of time, is that it? For example, if you just watch that clip, that's 30 seconds of the passage of time you'll never get back. It's gone. It's flown the coop. It's out there playing among the stars while space aliens from planet Zongo laugh their intergalactic socks off at you, squandering 30 seconds of the passage of time to listen to Kamala Harris. And what about me? Where do I stand in the great passage of time? I had an hour of sparkling, insightful analysis all ready to go, and then I thought, you know, Kamala's right. There's nothing as significant as the passage of time. I mean, that's heavy. That's one deep trip she's laying on me. And I mean, the fact that it's decades since I can recall even hearing the vernacular expression about anyone laying heavy trips on you testifies itself to the passage of time and its significance. Kamala Harris is telling us to lay back, smell the daisies, watch the paint dry. Out there around the world, men are invading neighboring countries, driving up the price of fuel, developing next month's COVID variant. Drafting plans for mandatory digital ID. But they're all missing the significance of the passage of time. Is there a tiresome old hippie with a song on the theme? Why, yes, there is. The secret life is enjoying the passage of time. Any fool can do it. There ain't nothing to it. You don't say. Joe Biden, the dead husk of a moth-eaten sock puppet currently being passed off as leader of the free world, is enjoying the passage of time in his basement watching reruns of Columbo. If at some point he forgets to come out of the basement, he will be succeeded as leader of the free world by Kamala Harris, which is a remarkable thought. The Constitution of the United States prescribes certain conditions and qualifications for the citizen representatives elected to preside over the people's government, and yet the great republic has wound up in the hands of a dead husk and a valley girl who keeps rehearsing her Miss America, My Plans for World Peace speech in public. Clearly, these two don't run anything. We all know that. In fact, Whoever's running Kamala Harris doesn't run anything because whoever writes her tweets and speeches keeps saying that Ukraine is in NATO, which it isn't. And it shouldn't have to be necessary to have to point that out to Joe Biden's principal emissary to the continent known as Europe. So the executive branch of the United States is in the hands of persons unknown. It's odd, very odd. One is reluctant to give credence to the notion that Klaus Schwab and his Spectre board meeting at Davos are in control of everything. Oh, I tell you what, can we, I'll always love seeing this. Can we have that picture of Klaus Schwab in his official World Economic Forum madman bent on world domination uniform? Let's have a look at it. Oh, wonderful. I'm afraid you're growing rather tiresome, Mr. Bond. Actually, uh, one of our viewers, Walt Trimmer, reprimands me for comparing Klaus Schwab to Blofeld or Darth Sidious and says he's more like Ming the Merciless from Flash Gordon. Let's have a look at that one, uh, shall we? 
Yes, as you can see, that's Ming the Merciless on the left and Klaus Schwab on the right. Who is actually running things? While Kamala Harris is out there talking drivel and Emmanuel Macron is wearing a hoodie and designer stubble and Boris Johnson is making plans for an underwater roundabout at the bottom of the Irish Sea. Let me know what you think. Who's really running things? GB Views at GBNews.uk. You can Twitter me at GB News.